herpes simplex as the topic and herpes simplex uh, is uh, caused by herpes simplex virus and there's two there's herpes simplex virus 1 and herpes simplex virus 2 and the transmission uh, is uh, it is technically a sexually transmitted disease but what's interesting is that because children can also get it and babies can also get it during delivery it's really the mode of transmission is really really called close contact uh, with an infected person and when the virus is actually actively shedding so it's a little bit of a different distinction but it definitely can be transmitted during sexual contact as well now what's important about this virus uh, that is rather sad and unfortunate is that it lays dormant in the nerves and in particular the dorsal root uh, ganglia dorsal root sacral ganglia now what can happen is that this uh, virus can then be uh, reactivated uh, because of some uh, triggers so periodically you can get a recurrence of herpes and here are some of the reasons a lot of uh, sunlight can trigger this uh, a febrile illness stress physical and emotional stress and definitely immunosuppression so for example someone who has HIV and has a low weakened immune system and that's why herpes is one of those things that just keeps reoccurring because it keeps uh, the recurrent herpetic eruptions are precipitated by all those things that I just mentioned so there's three types of herpes uh, infections that I wanted to touch on to give you an illustration of what this is like in terms of signs and symptoms presentation so the first one is uh, pretty much uh, a lesion mucocutaneous lesion and these lesions are commonly uh, occurring on the mouth or the lips or the conjunctiva or the cornea and what can happen is you have these uh, characteristic uh, vesicles that are in clusters they kind of look like like that different sizes like that and then the base they're sitting on this erythematous red base so they, they describe that as an erythematous base and I encourage you to look up pictures of uh, the herpes uh, mucocutaneous lesions to get an idea of what this looks like the second type of uh, herpes presentation is something that happens known as uh, herpes labialis and there really isn't that much of a difference it's just technically just given a different name it's kind of resembles an ulcer or a cold sore and normally appears on uh, the lip the area of the lip that uh, a woman would apply lipstick on known as the vermilion border vermilion border that's the area that um, this uh, cold sore where it will appear on and the last one uh, which I don't have enough space for is the most common one is genital herpes and that is by far the most common and in fact it's the most common ulcerative sexually transmitted disease in the world and basically what you have is uh, on either the penis in a man or the labia in a, in a female you have the very similar type of uh, vesicles which is the cluster of small vesicles on a erythematous base so very similar to the previous uh, description but this time 
it's appearing in the genital area. So very important. So how do you diagnose it? The, the diagnosis really is sort of just characteristic lesions can kind of tell you that, look, this is herpes, but there is definitely some tests. There's a PCR testing, which is by far the most sensitive. It has 95% sensitivity. And uh, this is definitely the best one. It's a definitive diagnosis. Polymerase chain reaction, just in case you're not sure what that is. There's another test that's done that is not as sensitive, but it's very commonly uh, tested or mentioned on licensing exam. It's called a Zank prep. And basically, um, that's also used in the diagnosis of uh, herpes simplex. But this is the one that's the best one. So you take a some fluid or material from the base of the vesicle and then you test it. So treatment, well the good news is that for all types of treatment, for all types of herpes, uh, the treatment is essentially the same drugs. Acyclovir is by far the most common and then valcyclovir is also used. Valcyclovir is more expensive. I'll draw two dollar signs here and one dollar sign. Actually, let's draw three. It's quite expensive, but so this is more commonly used. These are antiviral drugs, and they all tend to end in vir, just in case you're wondering. And the uh, the viral drugs uh, are great because they reduce the viral shedding. Because remember, when the virus is shedding, that's what's actually causing the virus to spread uh, from person to person when there's close contact. So they reduce the viral shedding. They also reduce the symptoms, uh, which can, you know, in severe herpes, these vesicles can be very painful. And then they also reduce the symptoms, and they also uh, shorten the viral excretion time. So and that's some of the reasons why you would use these medications. So now let's take a look at some vignettes and see what this looks like. A 17 year old white female at 20 weeks gestation presents with a two day history of painful vesicular lesions on her labia. This is the first time she has ever had this problem. Her last sexual contact was 10 days ago. She has also had low grade fever, malaise, headaches, mild diffuse abdominal pain. On exam, she has vesicles and an erythematous papules on the labia bilaterally. A few firm, tender inguinal nodes are also noted. Which of the following is, tests is the most sensitive for confirming the diagnosis? Well, she most likely has herpes simplex. And because she's pregnant, this is actually a particular concern because this can be transferred uh, during... Uh, birth, uh, actually even before birth, transpercentrally to the fetus, or during birth uh, when the baby passes through the birth canal, because if you notice, the vesicles are on her labia. So if it's transferred to the fetus, the fetus can have very high risk of problems such as neurologic disease. So it's very important that you treat this. The most sensitive of the tests is PCR. It has 95% sensitivity. Zank test is also used, but it's very low in terms of sensitivity, low sensitivity. So the correct answer for this question is D. Next question. A 32-year-old woman comes to the physician because of recurrent painful outbreaks of her on her labia and vagina. Her first outbreak was six years ago. At that time, she developed what she thought was a bad flu with malaise and fever, along with a painful rash on her labia. This initial outbreak resolved, but since then she has had approximately 8 to 10 outbreaks a year. Each outbreak is preceded by burning in her perineal area. A few days later she develops vesicles and then shallow painful ulcers that resolve in about 10 days. Which of the following is the most appropriate pharmacotherapy? Well, it was rather unfortunate, and this clinical vignette illustrates the recurrence, the recurrent nature of herpes simplex. And unfortunately there's no cure, but you can use uh, an antiviral drug known as acyclovir and valcyclovir uh, to shorten the duration of symptoms and that would be choice A. 
And finally, big long one. 28 year old woman comes to the office because of a three day history of abdominal pain, fever, headache, and muscle aches. She recently returned from a vacation to Europe where she met a man that she is going to marry. She is feeling so lousy though that she is having trouble planning her move. She has been a patient of yours for years and usually very healthy. She is a smart woman who exercises regularly, eats a low fat diet, does not smoke cigarettes, and rarely drinks alcohol. She has been sexually active over the years with two different partners and uses condoms for birth control. She admits that she was not as careful as usual about condom uh, use during her vacation. Her last menstrual period began three days ago. Temperature is 37. Physical exam shows numerous vesicles, pustules, and painful erythematous ulcers on her perineum, vulva, and vagina. A Zach smear of scrapings from the lesion shows multi-nucleated giant cells. A tissue culture isolates herpes simplex virus 2. At this time, the most appropriate correct statement is, well, you've only got two to choose from here. Condoms do not eliminate the transmission of the virus when lesions are present. That is actually the correct statement because transmission by skin-to-skin -skin contact uh, can occur even when a condom, in condom is used because if the lesions are present, the lesions can still uh, you know, there still can be contact from person to person, even with a condom. Even with a condom, you can have skin-to-skin uh, -skin contact of the lesions. So B is the correct answer. Let's look at A. Acyclovir will shorten the duration of symptoms. That is correct. But not the viral excretion time. Acyclovir does shorten the viral excretion time. So the but not part is incorrect. So that's why A is not correct. So the correct answer is B.